Well, once again, a guy has found myself at my friend's place in Iowa, where I bought this 1972 Ford F-250 Sport Custom pickup truck, sight unseen. Here I am looking at it now. It's a gem. It was, until recently, parked in a shed for 19 to 20 years. It's supposed to be a one owner, lower mileage truck. Pretty awesome, actually. Now I'm gonna try to get this thing running again and on the road, but instead of drive it home to South Central Tennessee, I'm gonna to try to drive it all the way across the state of Iowa and then all the way across the state of South Dakota, over 800 miles to the historic Mount Rushmore Monument. Random, right? Well, listen, here's why. In just a few days, I start filming an episode of Roadworthy Rescues, and obviously I have to be there and I can't be late. So instead of going all the way to Tennessee and then potentially catching a flight, like a red eye or blue eye flight, I don't know what they're called, and then come all the way back up again, I'm just gonna drive this gem all the way there. And now that I'm saying this out loud, definitely does not make sense. And there is no way I'm making this. Well, it's gonna break down. That's too bad. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. How you doing? For the rest of you, welcome back. You'll recognize this place. This is where we worked on the Lake Inversaliasis after we got her up and going. And then, what was the other one? Oh, Uncle Buck, the Marquis Brougham. That was parked right over there, actually. My good friend Chad here likes to just get me into buying old rigs and he drags them over to his place for me. So that's pretty neat. So we got to work quickly. It's supposed to rain off and on all day. That's great. <laughs> but we need it. They're, you know, they need it, they say. So let it rain, I guess. Let's walk around this truck, drink it in. I'm excited about it. I've already confirmed it is, in fact, a one owner truck. Old Wilo ordered this puppy up, and the dealership received it December 3rd, 1971. And he picked it up in. March of 72, I believe, if I remember correctly. It looks pretty straight. No, <laughs> it is rotten, but I don't know. Let's walk around it, drink it up, see what we got in the power barn, start accessorizing. I don't have a plan. We're definitely not gonna make one. This needs to run and it needs to run quickly. And we gotta get some reliability out of it. If we're gonna make it across however many states, two, three, all right. Well, as like I say, at first glance, it don't look too bad, but if you spend any more than three seconds, you start realizing that, well, there ain't nothing quite left of the rig, but we got, you know, there's trim on it, and stuff like that. Kind of a bumper, for the most part-ish, is there. I don't think we'll be a putting a ball on that anytime soon. Ah, some cool looking reflector things. Again, this is a sport custom where Ford was kind of getting like Dodge in the late 60s, early 70s, where every truck had to have a weird name like Warlock, Red Expresses, and whatever. This was the Custom or the Sport Custom or the Ranger or the Ranger XLT or the Camper Special or the Work Edition or the Ranch Edition or the... I don't know what any of it means, let's be honest. So the hood is nice. That's pretty cool. The glass is in great shape. Looking good there. This fender is... You know, we got some speed holes. I think this is a factory option. When you add the step here, wind comes through here and out here, and that's so you don't lose any MPGs. You know, economy stuff was important in the 70s. Noticing this, this is cooler, but more worse or badder for us. This is the original wheel and hubcap and stuff, but this is the split wheel. They're actually really dangerous if you don't know how to mount and dismount these. And some shops won't even touch these now 
you got to go to like a co-op or a heavy truck or tractor or utility place to get tires mounted and well i'm positive these are from the 60s early 70s i don't think that's gonna that's gonna get us to mount rushmore so tires and wheels already concerning and on the list of things we must do nothing to see there that seems fine doors in really good shape you know that's okay cab corner kind of a speed hole there as well a little bit of weight deduction that seems fine i don't think we'll have to do anything with that bottom of the box you ask perfect flawless don't see nothing going on man i love these tires oh we got some floppage level six is there even a frame left i don't want to look we've we've had some stuff with frames recently let's just ignore it look at this power king that thing was brand new when this truck was parked and it looks like you know old Wilo, he uh did a little bit of rust-oleum restoration on the wheel looks pretty good looking pretty good i got these wheels are for another project i'm gonna haul them with me and end up shipping them i think but they're 16 fives hard to get tires for them darn things but what i'm saying here is the box well it's i don't know how it's holding on to anything i think the tailgate is actually holding the box sides on and i'm guessing we don't want to try to take that down because of this fall on the ground so we'll just say this works pretend everything's fine there more of the same over on this side Ooh, oh we didn't have floppage until i just broke something now we got level three floppage air in that tire yet i do know i can't remember if it's the front or the rear but my buddy said when he drug this out of the shed it was locked up it was skidding so we're gonna have to figure that out this door looks brand new nice and then you know more of the more of the same what is okay we got foil tape that's been spray did i okay i've worked this clearly this is expert body work and i've worked on this truck before i just i don't remember quite when that was but grill is in okay shape other than the custom repairs over here I'm not quite sure what happened but back here it's brand new see what i'm saying all right let's jump inside and check it out hey that actually opens pretty good we had ignition sticks <sighs> oh it's like used dentures full of hot pencil shavings it's really it's kind of pleasant <laughs> it's definitely dusty oh wow this is cool it's in actually really good shape. Look at the door card. That's really cool. Seats in pretty good shape. There's the tag. 871. Oh, the build sheet. That's cool. Hopefully the tank is still good, not full of rust. We're gonna need the capacitai. Interior's pretty darn nice. Look at this, Johnson Messenger 123SJ. That'd be really cool if that still worked. Here we go. March 2004, 76,520 miles. It has 76,730 miles, so parked in 04 with 76,000 miles on this. Wow. Look at the headliner. It's absolutely perfect. That is so cool. Got some insurance stuff there. 72, lime green. Don't run, I guess. <laughs> we'll fix that, maybe, probably not. Don't even want to hit the brake pedal. You know how that goes. Jump in the other side. 
This side of the seat is perfect. Old timer's got carpet laid down over the original flooring, which looks to be in pretty good shape actually still. A couple parts, a couple points, we might need those. Okay, that seems fine. Old Phil call AM radio. I'm pretty fired up about this truck, I gotta be honest. I don't think Wilo smoked. It's a non-smoker, 76,000 mile rig with the tin foil. He's got the ankle vent plugged up with tin foil. That's fine. That's approved. Man, these door cards are just in perfect shape. Normally the weather, the, the weather outside is weather. And then this gets all soaked up and wavy and I don't think this door has even been open that much, to be honest. Look at that. Ignore the rust falling out of the ceiling. Other than that, oh, it's dirt daubers. Awesome. You know me, a feller ain't opposed to working outside and whatever type of weather, but I got to get this one wrapped up pretty quick and flopping around in the grass here while it's raining on me all day. Ain't going to get her done. So I think what we're going to do, we got a small break in the weather here. Chad knows a guy that knows a guy that either has or knows another guy. Got a skid steer with forks. I think we're just going <whistles> to and slam this thing into the shop here where a guy can get a bigger forehead on him than just this guy here. And we can continue working on this guy. If all goes well, I really, really ought to be on the road tomorrow late afternoon at the latest. Is it possible? <sighs> Haven't even opened the hood yet. <laughs> That's fine. Well, here we go. Trying to move it into the shop. The rear is rolling. It must be the front that's locked up. It's been sitting here quite a while. I think I bought it a year or two ago. I can't remember. Trying to get it pivoted here to get it pushed in. That right front is locked, solid. It will not rotate. And uh, it's, it's doing good. Nice. All right, success. We got her pushed back in the shop here. Now I can work on it through the rainstorm and thunderstorm and tonight should be pretty good. So let's get the power barn open. We've been through everything else. Now Ford has a bunch of different flavors of engines, you know, in this era, the fifth generation kind of stuff. So let's see what we got. Okay, there we go. Oh, nice. We got a 360 under here, I think. I think it's the second largest. I think you get a 390. At least the air cleaner says 360. We'll dig in. And it looks very original. And we got completed. Pretty sure. It's looking like it. Well, you can come over here and look, is what I'm telling you. At real quick first glance, it looks like everything is here. And it's one of the mysteries. I don't know why this was parked up. I don't know if. If Philo just got a little long in the tooth, or if he had an issue, it could be transmission, rear end, blow it up, I don't know. 76,000 miles, we hope it's a good runner. We got a lot of miles to get down, that's for sure. It says 360 there. And uh, anywhere between 360 and 390. Oh, there you go, 360 underneath that. So that's pretty cool. It's going to have disc brakes. You can tell because, you know, we're looking at it. The booster. It's got the heavy duty power steering cooler. Belts are still on it, old Goodyear belts. 
battery tray, kind of weight reduced. I don't know if that was a homemade hold down or something there. Steel me junction is all here. The mice haven't really got into the wiring. That's pretty impressive. Looks like we're gonna have coil and point system, thankfully. Boy, it is rotten. Look at this. Oh boy. The whole support is, well, gone. Basically, there's nothing left. Check your front tire though when you're checking your oil. See? That's pretty slick. Well, I think before we address the locked up wheel, figure out the transmission works and everything else, obviously we gotta make sure it runs. First and foremost, then we could spend some more time and a little bit of money trying to get this thing back on the road. 19 years is a long time to sit, and unfortunately, I don't know what kind of building or barn it was sitting in, if it was dirt floor or concrete or whatever, but regardless, it's a long time to just sit idle. So we're gonna start by making sure the engine just rotates and it's not stuck. Hopefully, we got a mechanical fan on here. Should be able to just grab this puppy and rotate the fan blades here. And if the belts don't slip, we should be able to turn the crank, make sure the engine spins. Oh, it moved. It's really tight though. <clears throat> no, it's not moving. Oh, there. There we go. Boy, it was super tight there. I can hear the valve train kind of snapping and popping. Okay. Yes. All right. Seems to be rotating. Whew. That is really good news. Check the Earl. A bunch of cobwebs on it. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know about that. Standard issue. Ooh. That just might be straight 30 weight. It's got some pretty good viscosity in it. I don't see any water or evidence of antifreeze or coolant or anything like that, but if we do get it running, we're really gonna have to pay attention to the head gaskets. We don't want them mixing betwixt the two. You know, this and that not be good. Probably gonna have to do a lot of highway or interstate driving, unfortunately, to get there in time. So it's gonna be higher RPM, hours on end. We're gonna need the head gaskets to head gasket things. Let's take this off, get in here. See if we got any Mises. Air filtration systems. We do not. Oof. We'll pretend we didn't see that. Filter's in great shape, we'll just say. Oh yeah, there is quite a bit of stuff in there. All right. Cute little motorcraft, got its original tag. It is not locked up, wow. Kick down rod is doing rod things. It's crazy how original this is. I got a, all the original clamps, with the exception of the upper and lower rad hoses, and one little section of heater hose, are all original. It's really cool. Well, we're just gonna jump teeth first into this. You know what I mean? Let's throw a lightning cube in this thing, start melting some wires. That way we can get some juice over here in the lightning system. We'll test the lightning can out, see what the lightning whirler is doing. Probably going to have to file the points and stuff like that, but engine is rotating. We got decent enough oil in it to run for a little bit. If we can get some spark, then we just throw something flammable down the yap. See if this thing can make some noise here for the first time in two decades. Then we can figure out a fuel system and the fuel pump is working. I've hit my head on this thing. 36 times now, I think. No, 37 and a half. 
Okay, lightning cubes. Very specific reason you need that for a 360. No, it was the cheapest one there with a really weird looking go handle, but nonetheless, it's a go handle. Sure, just lay it right on top of the right on top of the rust there. Mm -hmm. Do a sparkle test here. Hey, that's good. And he's shooting lightning everywhere. All right, just gonna sit here for a minute. See if anything gets melty. These old rigs, you just, you don't know what's gonna happen if there's a short or wires crossed or mice damage. These look pretty good. All right, let's pop this cap off. Boy, that's been on there a while. Well, I'm gonna have to get a rear driver out. I guess so. That's pretty good shape. Oh, see, this is why we look for stuff like that. We saw those points or contacts in the glove box. The old timer, I think, just switched them. These are in really good shape. It doesn't look like the cap or rotor have been replaced, obviously, but see there? Them already been monkeyed with. And I happened to stop at the perfect point. We can uh, see if we're getting sparkles in here. It should snap or pop. A little tiny spark there once we get all this juiced up and everything. I'm gonna run the digital meter across the coil here. I might as well test this, just get it done and out of the way. We can make sure the coil's functioning. Then we'll move on to points. See if we can get the lightning all the way down to the sparkulators. That's probably gonna last 800 miles. Nope, definitely not. All right, baseline. Baseline reading. 12.45, okay. Now, we gotta flip this over to the horseshoe mode. We're gonna test the primary and the secondary windings of the lightning can here. 9.39, it's good. And then we'll turn this down to 200. Go across each post. 2.1, er, seven dollars. Works just fine. Hey, I think the ignition coil is good. So we're gonna plug all that back in. Well, just these two wires. Now we can go turn the ignition stick on. I'm gonna rotate the distributor camshaft. We should hear snap, crackle, pop. Not in that particular order, but pop, crackle, snap, crackle, snap, crackle, pop, snap. Should we get some spark in here? And then uh, we'll see if that goes down these old hoses. We might replace some. Ceiling fan has me feeling like I'm in the matrix here. Anyway, what happens when we turn this on? That comes on. Break. Okay, anything else? No, we better test this right out the gate. Nothing, that's too bad. What about this? <sighs> that might work. Well, we'll play with that down the road. That might work yet. We got a fan motor. <laughs> Immediately regrets that. Okay, that could work maybe. I don't, maybe we're empty. Not sure. No way. We got wipers, both of them. 
porn works. Wow. Okay. Well, anyway, keys on. We should have power to ignition. It's the remix to ignition. Something, something, kitchen, hot and fresh on the dishes. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just uh, checking for 12 volts here with the key on. We want to rule out that being an issue. Must be a ballast resistor in line, but yes, we have voltage. Okay, that's good. Things are 38, 39. Are you counting? Okay. I just heard it. I'm seeing it. I'll show you. Come over here, look at it. We got a big firestorm going on. Okay, that's good. Shouldn't be any reason it ain't gonna go down the lightning system here. Put this back, that's pretty. I'm gonna file this with my Leatherman quick. I may end up putting new ignition parts in this. Just because I got such a long road trip and we get this on the highway. We can't be farting around. We're gonna have to get there. I can't, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. If something happens bad, we're gonna have to get a rental or try to fly. I think I drive through Sioux Falls and Pier. They might have airports. But anyway, we're not gonna have time to sit on the side of the road and mess with little things. So I might go ahead and, look, usually I say she only needs what it needs. But this time we might actually put some parts on this just, just to, uh, I don't know the words, help her, help the probability of us getting there. Okay. Okay. This goes to the coil maker, lightning storm up doodabber. This one, where did you go? Here it is. Well, that over there. All right, let me get something flammable. Let's see if this thing sparks off. <sighs> no, I. It's like 13 year old gas or something. Maybe it's mixed. It's probably, you got two strokes. Anyway, this is probably two stroke mix found on the shelf. <laughs> sure, this, uh, this dumped this in. <laughs> I, these <sighs> gas cans are, why? Okay. That was way too much. Perfect. Okay. All right. I digress. Let's see if it even has a starter. Oh, I'm nervous. Yes. It's rotating. That sounds pretty good, actually. It's pretty even, doesn't have a big gallop in it. Bring the thunders. Yes! <laughs> Fired right off. Never even touched the throttle. Valve train, significantly unhappy because it hasn't built oil pressure, I'm assuming. But it runs. Let's do that again. I didn't even look at the exhaust, if it's plugged or not. There it goes. Clanking went away. It's building oil pressure in here. Wow. It had about that much oil pressure. And that the valve train was starting to quiet down. I hear exhaust coming out somewhere back here. I don't even know where. But that must not be plugged. I'm in such a hurry I didn't even look. Usually a guy disconnects the, the old fuel pump to make it happen or before I do, you know, fire tests like that, but to be honest, we're really gonna need that fuel tank. And I always say that, we end up running jugs in the passenger floor, so that's probably what we'll do. But listen, there's a slight chance 
this tank is good. I've had pretty good luck with the Ford and Chevrolet tanks in the cab. It just seems when they're not out in the weather, you know, like cars hanging out in the back and stuff like that, they don't usually get as bad insides of the tank. So we might just throw, see, I don't look. It's not super scaly, even in the filler neck. And this was definitely on all those years. You could see that. So we might just throw some fuel in this and see what we get coming out of the other end at some point. But now that we know she's a runner and made oil pressure, it wasn't playing knock knock or stairway to heaven or anything like that. I think we go ahead and just uh, drain on the Earl. Let's trade that out. I think we'll go ahead and put some sparkulators in it. We'll read on them. Make sure everything is nice and even, looking good. There's no physical damage, any of that stuff. I think I might even got lightning hoses. And then we'll keep some of these for spares if in I got the right bunch. But this, we don't know quite yet if we have an accelerator pump. Doubtful, very. Works, works. Ooh, that is really, really hot. Not normal. We'll pretend I didn't see that. Great. Moving on, oils, then ignition. Best design ever in here. They put the drain plug right above the cross member. So not only can you hardly get anything in here, definitely not from the backside, but when you drain the earls, it just flows all over the cross member in 42 different directions. And you can't get it in the catch pan and all of that. It's just really, really nice. Looking pretty good so far. I don't see any internal combustion parts or metal or you know, rocks, anything like that. Did I take the... Oh, I did. I don't know. It's just not draining very good. Hmm. It's got a Napa Gold filter, which is nice. The new Napa Golds, which actually I happened to grab, um, basically made by Man and Hamill, which is Wix. This is the fuel line here. We might pop a fill tray in there just so we can keep an eye on that. Out with the old, in with the new. Always make sure you oil up your, your seal, your ring. This is the ring seal here. When you're twisting these on, you don't want them to get caught and pop off the filter or wrinkle up or roll. You're not gonna get a good seal. You're just gonna spray oil everywhere. Also make sure your old seal comes off with your old filter. So you're not double stacking your rings. That's also not good. Tried to put a little bit in here. Probably gonna spill most. Trying to get it back up on the engine, but it'll shoot the oil pressures a little bit faster if this has some in it already. Yeah, filters in. This old boy needs the right oil. You know what I mean? So I have a, there's a torch here now. Set that over there. I've got, uh, you know, the Rotella T4, heavy duty diesel oil. It's got all the vitamins and minerals this old engine's gonna need. We're gonna dump a little bit of that in. Then, for the extra, I got the old Hyperlubes. And prevents oil breakdown. And it, um, turns petroleum oils into hyper performance. I don't know, look, it's got a flag on it and it would be the other court. Well, I'm gonna dump a little bit in first and I'm gonna dump this into here and then I'll shake this because this is like maple syrup and it'll pour in easier, but I gotta find my funnel first. I just got it. Probably could have ran the oil that was in here because we know it only had three, 400 miles on it, but you know, I'm just doing our due diligence here. Yep. Mm -hmm. There, yep. Oil, oil's going on the engine. <sighs> Boy, it is humid out. It's bad, because it rains and the sun comes out, and it rains and the sun comes out. And then it rains twice, and then the sun kind of comes out, and then it rains again. Boom. Bam. 
Here we go. Look just like Britney Spears these days dancing. Pretty good. Okay. There we go. Thunderstorms. This is lightning. I don't, yeah, so we're going to put in some lightning hoses, but I got to look in here. I think I'm going to go ahead and vacuum out all that stuff, because that's likely to just catch on fire. And then we'll go ahead and start pulling the spark lighters out and replace these up real quick. I got this handy dandy little vacuum. I think I use this on the Rosalius. This cute little jobber, but it'll do the job. Lightning hoses are in. Went ahead and put a cap and rotor on there. And 50% of the spark layers. As you can see, I got a little, I got some extras. Reason being is the back two plugs on both sides are, they're just seized in the heads. I cranked and cranked and cranked and WD-40 and it just wasn't happening. So I'm hoping after a couple of nice heat cycles It'll loosen them plugs up and we can maybe get them out somewhere down the road if we need to or something like that. But now we got to work on fuel capacity. We know it runs. we got decent ignition now. We just need to get, well, we might as well just jump in and see if the tank works. So I've got a five-gallon jug. We'll throw that in the tank, crank this thing back up, see if the fuel pump works. Doubtful. Very. I should actually put a fill tray in line first and then we'll crank on this thing again and see if we can pull something from the tank hopefully it doesn't have a bunch of debris and rust and stuff like that and then we can let this thing sit here and idle make sure the cooling system is going to work make sure the charging whirler is charging you know the deal we got a long ways to go yet i got updates first of all Here's that beautiful Suburban I borrowed last time I was here. This time I get to use the Plum Crazy Ranger. More importantly, look at this. I got some 16 inch wheels that aren't the Widowmakers. These are standard wheels. These are actually uh, Chevrolet's. In fact, I think I even got the... I do. Poverty caps. Get this. I mean, this is a true story. Wow, that one's in good shape. I traded four Red Bulls, a bag of dill pickle chips, and two beef jerky sticks for these wheels. Now, I can't use these tires. These tires are shot. But it helps us get rid of those whittle makers, and we're going to be able to get something else mounted up on these. Going to run to the gas station and get that filled up quick. Up and in. Five gallons of top shelf 87 IO Weegian. IO Weegian. IO. Uh, IO. In. I'm putting gas in the truck. There's five gallons here. And I'm hoping this is going to be enough. I don't hear it dumping out the bottom yet. <laughs> That's sweet. And then uh, check out the gas gauge. That's the very first thing I'm going to do. That'd be nice. Oh, it's spilling all over the beautiful paint. Medium lime, I think, is this color. Pretty snazzy back in the day. All the chrome stuff, definitely going to get me home. It's all the chrome. Nope, never. You know the difference? Is that the sports? The custom because of the chrome, and what else do you get? You know what you get from a custom to a sport custom. Bleep bloop it down there so a guy can learn something. All right, let's crawl under and we got to get filtration systems going. Try the fuel gauge out. Nope. Unless that's just not enough to 
you know, get the needle to move, but I would think so. Maybe not. It's tight. Ground is tight. Hmm. I also allegedly may have spilt a little bit. And now it's like track prep in here. I got this, I don't know, Chad must have slipped a couple times off the brake, the clutch. There's burnout marks in here. Now it's like staging lanes. Whoops! So now a guy's got to get this oil soaked fuel line, you know, because filter sideways above it, off. And we're going to put a fill tray in here. So I might have to like make a loop or something. And I'm also going to pretend that I told you we should do this first before putting in the fuel. Because now it's going to spray fuel in my eyes well hopefully but then we can also pretend I told you well this way we can test to see if the lines plugged or if the pickup tubes rotted off or any of that stuff and then uh, we'll put that filter in it plug it in the pump hopefully the pump still pumps and does pump things and then we're we're well on our way look at this another original clamp only the top clamp was replaced on this, kind of odd. Hopefully this thing holds up. Looking kind of rotten, to be honest. We do not have fuel free flowing, which I believe with this tank style is no bueno. So I'm gonna get the air hose, which is laying. It's laying, the air hose was. I'll get the air hose eventually. We're gonna blow backwards through this, make sure we can hear it making bubbles and stuff. And um, I'm gonna make up the filter and a couple pieces of hose so I can just plug that in with some new, uh, you know, the doodabber tightener upper. <whistles> Swirm hose clamp. That's what I'm saying. So, um, I'm laying in what might look like gasoline, but. <laughs> So I blew back in this line, made some bubbles, and must have uncleared it because the second I pulled the air hose off, boy, she was a gusher. A little bit of rust sediment already coming through. I don't even have this clamped yet. But the good news is there's no gasoline spilling from here to there, so the line must not be rotted. i got to clean this mess up really quick. I'm sticking to the floor, and we'll get this clamped up. Well, unfortunately, the fuel pump has rotted away and is leaking up here on the case itself. There's flowing fuel out of it. So i got to quick pinch this off. We're going to have to put a different pump in it. Well, I got this old guy out. I think I got the right looking pump. But unfortunately, this one has a different style or size fitting than this one. This is for a, you know, a typical line and fitting bubble flare that would go in there. And this is for like just a threaded fitting that goes to like a barb. I don't have that size, so I'm gonna need to pick that up. This one here I think was leaking right around this pressed in fitting. And in a lot of pumps, this is where it's gonna leak here. Is this collar is just squeezed on basically. Um, Hopefully this one doesn't leak out of the box, hard to say. Cheapest one I could possibly get, of course. So I gotta run, I don't, I don't know what town it's called, but I gotta go to the parts store and find that. I'm gonna bring the pump with me. And then unfortunately, we're gonna be losing some of that sta steel line, the original line. I can get a little cutter. Um, I like to keep that fitting. Or maybe we'll cut it right here, and then we'll convert that to rubber to go down into the pump over there. Well, the guy's back from his 59th auto parts trip. Got the pump, got the brass fitting in it, got the line kind of on, because we'll have to feed this up through the provision from this gigantic Starship Enterprise wing-looking mountain thing for the go left, go right machine. And then got the uh, gasket already glued on it. 
fun fact, AMC, Chrysler, Ford, GM obviously, Jeep, Eagle, Toyota, there's a bajillion different vehicles that use that same exact gasket for fuel pumps. So if you're ever in a jam and they're like, oh, we don't have one for a 360 Ford, I said, give me one for a 76 C10 pickup with a 350. Boom. Done deal. This was a little tricky because all this alien stuff over here and, you know, things. I basically had to jam my hand in here, get the socket on, use an extension which isn't even all the way connected, and I'm trying to get this inside bolt started, and it has been just a fight and a nightmare and a half. But the good news is we're like 3% of the way there, and when we get done, we're going to have a new fuel pump later. That's pretty neat. New pumps installed there. We'll let this gravity feed and fill that container up, you know, do that thing. And now we have a filter in here that we can keep our eye on. If, in fact, we get this up on the road, we can crawl under every time we fill and just keep an eye on that. We might have to swap it out. We still have this big project coming up. What in the world am I even looking at? <sighs> Dinner plate breaks out of a... Bugatti on a Ford pickup. Sweet. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and fill up the car bowls again, light this thing off, and let it sit here and idle. If we're getting fuel out of the tank, we can let this run for whatever, five, ten minutes. We can start checking things like thermostat opening, the thermostat, and the charging whirler. And all of that. And we don't have a lot of sediment in the fuel filter yet, but remember, nothing is flowing. So once this starts pulling fuel, like we hope it will, could get real bad real quick. Used to never have to worry about new parts being bad either, but today, yes, you do. It's an issue. Ouch! 42. <laughs> okay. Might have to take a sip of your cold snack every time I bounce my head off this here furred hood. I'm gonna hook up the old Lone Wolf 6000 so I can stay out here and watch things happen. Steal me junction makes that really easy. Clip the key on. Alright, alright, alright. Here we go. That was making me nervous for a second. It's butted. All right, full fuel, full fuel. Come on. What? There's a lot of debris. <laughs> All right, let me go check the oil pressure. I don't hear it clanking. We do have our oil pressure back. It must be pulling fuel. We'll know in about 7.3 seconds. No, 7.4295783 three repeating seconds. Voltages, 13.3, it's charging. Right out of the gate. 13.7, 13.8. Wow, I haven't even opened this. 44 are we on? 45? Oh, that is empty, empty. Okay, I'm gonna have to address that here pretty quick. Don't know how, don't have any tool. <laughs> we got a garden hose? I'm sure we do. Hello, garden hose. Go once. We'll find it. I don't even know. Look, I found it on the shelf. There's, there's 
a little bit in the bottle. It smelled like peppermint. I think it might have been like bug spray or something. So anyway, I dumped that in, of course. And then uh, found a spigot. We're just going to go back and forth one jug at a time until I get this filled up. We'll fire it up again, let it run long enough to warm up. Hopefully the thermostat opens. If that does open, I'll put the cap on. We'll pressurize this thing. See if the head gaskets stay together, the water pump. What was that? What's happening? Where's that coming from? Oh, I was spilling. <laughs> that could have been bad, you know? It was low, but it wasn't empty, I don't think. All right. Watch this Ford just come to life and purr. 19 years. It's like a shut off yesterday. Look at the engine. It's not even shaking, wobbling, wallering, banging, smoking. Okay, it's smoking pretty bad, actually. But I mean, it's not, you know, Ford power. All right, we're going to let it sit here. I'm going to go get another jug. So I'm assuming the thermostat opens this is going to go. Copper on. While we're waiting, I just pulled the headlight stick on. Marker light, headlight. Marker light, headlight. I'll be dead. Look at this. What? Oh, man. What a good old truck. Oh, got a side light out. I'll forgive it. Looks like that's been an ongoing issue. He's had that off a few times. Huh. Power steering must be empty. Good oil pressure. Get some air bubbles out. Looking pretty good. really really smoky but there's you know two decades of old oil burning off the rings are coming around it's blowing a bunch of smoke back in the shop but that could clear up I just can't get over how steady look at this you could balance a nickel on that carburetor pretty incredible Green beans is purring away here. Well, I think it's time we ought to check the shift machine. Still trying to figure out why this thing was parked. There's a 3.46% chance that Milo just got old. Parked it. Just wasn't going to drive anymore, you know? And then the rest of the percentage, whatever the math equals for the Delta, something's wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? 76,000 miles, but. I mean, why would you park it up? So, let's jump in. I'm going to grab reverse. I'm going to grab drive. See if we can get some gears out of this thing. I ain't worried about it going anywhere because I'm telling you, well, you'll see here in a second, this front right is locked up like county jail. It ain't doing nothing. So, with any luck, it tries to move. First, big positive. Neutral, drive. Yes, there was a big pause. I was a little worried. Let's try it again. Drive. There you go. And as you can see, I'm not, there's no brakes. That front's just locked up. Doesn't want to quit long gear. Oh, 
right. We got a transmission. What's left? Rear end. That could be an issue. Still gonna let this run. Thermostat is still not open, which is a little bit odd. They're keeping an eye on the temperature gauge there. You know, back home, when we don't fly into places, I got a little thermometer thing I can keep an eye on the rad. Thermostat housing, stuff like that. Don't got it. So we just use our fingertips. The old flanges and whatnot. Oh, coming up soon, we got a big battle. Brakes. This front's locked up. I don't know if it's the wheel bearing or if it's the caliper. Or the, it's probably the caliper, but we're going to have to dig into that and figure all that out. we got to have at least front brakes. I have no idea what the rear is doing. Pretty sure we're just going to be snapping brake juice sticks off left and right. Melting fittings, putting her all back here. You just saw the Firebird. It's going to be more of that, but for some reason the calipers are as big as the watermelon. Sweet. That's great. Well, if the truth went on ahead and been told right now, I think the uh, temperature gauge is not functioning. It got pretty warm. Looks like sitting here idling. Thermostat definitely opened. Overfilled it a touch. Into the expansion tank there. I can't really see if it's circulating, but I'm assuming it is because it's not boiling over. It just got warm. The engine runs. The transmission shifts. The cooling is doing kind of cooling things. Now we're left with the main point of, well, the vehicle doesn't move. It's locked up, stuck. And I've been dragging my feet, and if I drag my feet anymore, I'm going to be ground down to the kneecaps. I ain't kidding you. So it's time to get a jack under this thing. Let's get this Widowmaker wheel off. Look at these Brembo brakes, whatever. I'm, I'm sure parts are abundant. No. Mm -mm. Not even. That's not a thing. Let's see if we can get this wheel turning. We're going to probably have to replace the caliper and the rotor and the bearings. And I'll break that and I got to put a soft light on it. I'm going to have to run a line over here and then we'll round the nut off on the distribution block. I want to get that out then. We'll find out that the master cylinder is bad. If I try to take that out, I'm going to ruin both those lines. Then I got to redo those lines down the distribution block. They'll be stuck in that distribution block. So I'm going to have to replace that block and then. After I replace that block, we're gonna figure out that I can also get the rear line off. So once I start doing the rear line, that's gonna get, I'll mess that fitting up and then we're on a rear line and who knows if that's even gonna work. And I haven't even talked about wheel cylinders yet. Okay, yeah, all right, sure. Okay. Under here maybe? I don't know. Goofy looking suspension, you never know what's happening. Okay, things are happening, I think. I wonder if this tire was dragging when he parked it, because it's awfully uh, worn compared to the other three. This why he parked it? I don't know. I just, I'm offering it up as an idea. That's all I'm saying, dude. Yep, <laughs> still ninja fast. Well, good morning. It's uh, yeah, it's the next day now. Day two, I guess, working on the truck. Seven Eleven early niner, million o'clock. Just out here working on these brakes. They did a lot of the same last night. We had a bunch of folks over. Let the hair down a little. Let the back neck. I just kept working on the truck here on this brake mess. Didn't get very far because it's. We're gonna be in a pickle on this, I think. I also made a really good acquisition last night because whilst working on the brakes, I started realizing I'm over budget quite a bit on this vehicle and I ended up buying some tires, they're new. I'll have to show you those as well. And uh, now my tires are worth more than I purchased the truck for and it was snowballing and then I still got fuel and motel and food back to South Dakota so I was like, I gotta save some money here. And then it dawned on me, I can do it with lodging. 
So, I bought a camper, and it's real nice. You know, it, it uh, needs some work here and there, but I can sleep in this now and save the, I mean, the motels are getting out of hand, even the Motel 6s and Super 8s. Bingo, money saver. So stick around because we're gonna try to jam that in the back of the truck now, I guess. And um, then we'll explore it once we get it in the vehicle. We unloaded this last night. Real nice young feller delivered it and uh, it's a little wobbly <laughs> on the setup here. There's actually valves like out of a head holding those jacks into place as a pin. More on that later. Let's get back to the brakes. So it doesn't look like I got very far last night, but I gotta tell you, it took a lot of doing just to get here. These are rotted, obviously. The lines are all bad. This hardware, I'm gonna snap, I'm sure, trying to get this stuff out of here, but I got to. I mean, I, this is, again, this is froze, it's locked up. And we can see why. I'm sure the pads are just hermetically sealed to said drum, disc, dinner plate, that thing. And uh, we need to get all that off. So that's what I'm going to be working on today is heat, <sighs> juice, pss, pss, and busting knuckles. Once I get this disassembled, then we can start figuring out what in the world we're going to do with that. <sighs> Another complete junk, needlessly overcomplicated, wasteful design by Ford. I've never in my life seen something like this. I, it just blows my mind. It's like a double sliding pin caliper situation. Once I got it off of the truck, with those slide pins and heat and hammers and everything else. Well, there's also floating pins here that the pads hang on. And the new caliper only comes with one set of pins. So now I'm in a situation where I have to save these pins. So I had to spend another half hour beating those out of this bracket without ruining them. So that was a lot of fun. That's what I'm left with there. I got to try to clean them up. They're supposed to go in here. I was hoping to get away with just doing one side, but that is so bad that I'm sure the other side's gonna need it. I don't have any of the springs and stuff that go in here and do something. So it's this is realistically, if I can't get out of here today, I, I need to be on the road. I mean, it's gonna shut me down because I don't have the time. I cannot be late getting there so I'm gonna keep plugging away but man this is not looking good I may have to come revisit this or something I'm gonna to try to get that caliper off without breaking that line which ain't gonna happen we'll snap that and then I'll ruin the hard line behind the soft line trying to get that off and then away we go see what I got going on here a little bit of a hillbilly vice I needed to get some leverage on this line with the best tool ever created so I uh, just took a lug nut and bolted the caliper to the hub assembly here. And with some heat and prying, I'll be dipped. We got it. So that might have just saved a bunch of time. We're going to need it though. I am. This side took about two and a half hours, probably. So I'm going to start on the other side. I got bearings and a seal waiting at O'Reilly. But I got to drive all the way down to uh, Iowa City or something like that. Cedar Rapids. I don't. I don't remember. So I want to get everything prepped first before I run into town, um, so I can get everything in one shot because it's a lot of time wasted driving back and forth. But 
this is good news. By the way, did you know you can tighten these with the wrench? Some of them have an Allen key. Some of them you can stick a screwdriver through and tighten. Yep, the more you know. So this side isn't all locked up. So I think I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. If I'm understanding this abomination, I'm just going to take this slide pin out top and bottom and the whole unit should be able to come out. I'm going to work on this line first since I can get leverage now. Try to get this off so we don't have to get into that stuff. And uh, see if I can get this whole rig off in one unit. Then, um, then I can work on getting the pins that I got to recycle. We still don't know once we build pressure with the master cylinder that's probably bad if these lines are going to hold up. But I'm just in. Basically, great things happen when you cut corners, and we're going to have to cut a lot of them to have time. So here we go. backing plate on this is just, well, it's Wi-Fi, basically. Also, speaking of Wi-Fi, so is that cab mount to the body there. It's, um, you know, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be there, but, yeah, well, we won't worry about that too much. Chad was kind enough, he's running into town to get the bearings and everything for me, so I'm just going to keep plugging away, get the other side disassembled like this, and then we could start maybe putting tires on this in the back anyway so the power kings are cool but i just don't think we're gonna make it on those especially now that we're hauling a camper <sighs> yeah okay so went ahead and spent the whole budget on these hand cooks this is at us i think we've used these before in some i don't i don't remember what but it looks like a really decent tire actually Got them mounted up on the Chevy wheels, of course. By the way, the poverty caps do fit on the Chevrolet wheels. However, went to put them on, and once you know it, the hub is slightly too large to fit the Chevy wheel. Well, no one's gonna touch these. We know that. So, put the turbines on. Those fit, they look awesome, but the lug nuts are wrong. Well, then we tried an aluminium wheel off a new GM. That's too small. So I think what we're gonna have to do is get an air grinder or something, Dremel, waller this out a little bit, and uh, see if we can slip them on. Ignore all the other stuff under here. And the frame, well, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put a camper on it still. Hmm. Yep. Never, never making it to South Dakota. So I cleaned this up a little bit, and then I'm in here just, you know, making circles. Trying to waller it out. Got this here deal. I don't know if I'm gonna get there, to be honest. Um, this one has a specific design. If you look at it, it's actually not a perfect circle. It's kind of stop sign-ish shaped. To fit that for whatever reason, but I'm gonna give her a go because we're running out of options here. I gotta get, we gotta get tires on this and we gotta get moving. Oh, so close. I am so close. Just, I need to take just a little more, maybe. Well, a guy was losing this bit pretty quickly and we still got another be able to do if in this whoa yeah, settle down buddy if in this even works so got out the big guns and i don't know if we got another disc that one's getting pretty chipped as well anyway really worked in her and then uh came back with the grinder and you know we got a perfect circle not the band the shape i also uh re-cleaned up this more aggressively i don't know Let's see if it fits. We're, I've got an hour into this now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at that. Like an absolute glove. So now you know.
you can put Chevy 8 luggers on an old Ford. Just gotta have a tickle of patience. Hey, that actually looks pretty snazzy, I gotta say. We gained a trim ring and a safer wheel, and now we know we got a good tire. So, I gotta do that whole process again on this wheel. Great. Well, the guy's working on the captain's side rear wheel, and uh, buddy Chad called me, who just drove all the way to Cedar Rapids. I called ahead of time to make sure that they had the wheels, heels, and the bearings. He's been there for 45 minutes while they're looking for the bearings. And uh, the wheel seals are wrong. <clears throat> so, I uh, don't have wheel seals, and I already knocked everything off. Come to find out, I can get them, but that's in Des Moines. Des, Des Moines? De, de. It's like two hours the other opposite direction. I think I should be driving through there on the way to South Dakota, ironically. So I ordered those and paid for those online. They're coming from the DC. So at some point I'm gonna to have to drive all the way there and all the way back tonight to try to get this front end put together. Everything's going really good is what I'm saying. At least I'm not in a huge time crunch and have none time to spares. So that's, this is fantastic, great. This one's been clearanced quite enough. Yep. Okay. Nope. Has not. Oh. On the 17th try, I was charmed. Or whatever. What it was is this flange had quite the lip on it actually. So I just took it smooth. Didn't mess up any of the nuts or anything, but... And, uh... Boop! Right on it went. Whew. Well, Chad made it back. We just went to dinner real quick. Here's the problem. Bearings, seals, 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 bearings, They ain't right. They're for a drum truck. We have the Brembo dump truck brakes. So they're not going to work. So I have no parts. I no longer have to go to Des Moines because even if I got the seals, I ain't got the right bearings. There's no, I can't use my new rotors at, at this juncture. I'm out of time. So even though I just told, uh, Tore off the old uh, rotors. We're going to use them. We're going to use the old bearings, you know, save some money. And I got some equipment here. I don't know where I put it. We're going to run them through a professional resurfacing machine. And by that, I mean, you know, I got a flap disc here and a knotted wire wheel. Cheek Poker 7000. We'll clean them up real good so the new pad's got something to surface on. Spit on the bearings a couple times. Put it all back together. Hopefully I can get this thing rolling and stopping here rather quickly. I am now, this will mean I'm a day behind, pretty much. Great. Let's dig in. Well, here's where the pad was stuck to it. Here's a ridge. And then this is resurfaced. See? You can't even tell. It's brand new. You think you're seeing pits in that, but you're not. I think it's just an optical illusion with the lighting in here currently. So I'm going to keep rebuilding these. See? Just truing them up a little bit. Doesn't take a lot with this particular machine. Oh, 
and I'll just have to run it. Those are some of the flavors of wheel seals that are wrong. Well, everything's going fine. I mean, I've seen and used worst, quite honestly. We're going to roll with that. I'm going to go ahead and repack the outer bearing. The, the inner I can't because I can't take that seal out. I'll ruin it. So we're just going to throw grease in there and then put some on the spindle as well and slam it all back together and just pray we can get 800 plus miles out of these bearings that have been sitting for two decades. So I'm back here on the gate of tails working on these dump truck brakes. Basically, they go like, whoops, they go like this, and then the spring goes in between, because you now you gotta spread them out. And then I have only two new ones of these, that's all I could find in the history of the world, amen two extra nuts for some reason. And this is where I gotta go find the old ones that I tried to save. I'm gonna assemble these. I gotta pop the actual piston side off um, to assemble these properly. Plus, this unit here, I need to twist onto my line. Cause I have to hold the line stationary, roll this onto the line. Because remember, we didn't get the line out. And then I can put it back on and, and bolt it up. It's 117 degrees in here. Minimum. Back crack waterfall level six. Still, don't go chasing that. Listen, we got the caliper mounting brackets and the pads and the calipers installed. <laughs> Crowd goes wild. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and confirm that this cylinder of death is bad so we can continue to ruin our day by replacing this. I'm gonna pop it open. Okay. Oh. Hey. It's actually really clean in there. Like. I'll just should come over here and look. This is, I've never, it's been a long time. I shouldn't say never. Long time since I've seen it that clean. I might just go ahead and fill this up and just see what we got. I'm probably going to have to bleed the master. I think I got a little cheap kit to do that. So let's go ahead now that we know we have a 13% chance that the master cylinder is good. Let's snap these lines off real quick. You know what I mean? And then we can spend the next three hours replacing those down to the distribution block, okay? I'm in Iowa, just snapping brake lines, snapping brake lines, snapping them off. All right, you know the process here. We're gonna use juice, heat, juice, heat, heat, juice, 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 heat, heat, juice, heat, juice, heat, juice, heat, heat, juice on the fitting itself, because the trick here is the nut gets hung up on the tube. So when you disengage the nut, it twists the tube with it and breaks it. Well, we don't want that, obviously. So we're gonna heat them, heat, heat them up, get some hot, get, get some uh, hot, we're gonna make them hot. Then juice them. We're gonna do this back and forth for 10 minutes. Then we'll try to back them out. Oh, we got a fire. This plastic box underneath the brake master cylinder on fire is slightly inconvenient. Okay. Well, these they are piping hot. Speaking of hot, I don't want that right in my eyebrow. Uh, end up looking like that one boxer guy with the face tattoo. Okay, here we go. Oh, butter. OK, 
Okay, 50% of the way there. Wow, the heat, juice, heat, juice, juice, heat, 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 juice, juice, heat, juice, heat trick works. I'm telling you, write it down. All right, take these lines off. We'll bleed this master cylinder first, try to speed up the bleeding process. And then we'll start breaking off bleeders. <laughs> Great. Rear wheel cylinders are gonna blow out and leak juice everywhere. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Oh, this is really hot in here. Well, we started bleeding. Got the uh, master cylinder successfully bled. I think that's working actually. Started building a little bit of pressure and then came the hiss. The line over the axle is spraying brake fluid all the way up here. So now I gotta crawl under there, take a look at that, start fixing. This is the slope I was telling you we were gonna end up on, and it's slippery. So that line over there looks like it's been replaced at some point. You could tell from the expert craftsmanship. This is where I, if you look close, it's hard to see, but there's a leak up there. And we're gonna snap it off in this wheel cylinder. And then we gotta pull the axle shaft to get the drum off. You know, that's fine. Let's let's uh, let's start this enjoyment plan. Hey, great news! Got the line replaced on the rear of the axle, and it's working great. And then we blew another line in multiple places. It's a big line from the front all the way to the back. I don't have any unions. I got three fittings left. Do you ever wonder why it is you do what you do? Yeah, me, me either. I was just wondering what, what you were thinking about it. Oh, I just got stung on the hand by a wasp. That was weird. Always in the trash bag. Well, I don't have a plan, but here's what I'm going to do. I found a... So first of all, it's already got an adapter to a coupler to a union to something weird where the distribution block is. And it's got two different chunks of brake line that's been replaced for the main feed line, which is now our issue. This thing's got more holes in it than, well, most HOAs, I'm going to be honest. Now listen, I don't have a union, but there's one in the line. So I'm going to cut where I think it's semi-fresh, pull out this chunk of line, get that union out, recycle one of the fittings, and I should be able to hopefully patch this together and it's our last shot because I have no more lines, no more fittings, and no more time. I'm just, I'm out of it. The brake lines are just in terrible condition. This is a union I need. So we're gonna try to sneak that out of there and then uh, start running our own line. I got just enough left of a 25 foot roll, hopefully. Well, I'm on my last fitting here. I actually flew with this in my checked luggage because I figured I was going to be doing this. Uh, this is a pretty slick machine. I got tired of using the little cheap ones because they just, they work like for three fittings and you're done. But this is pretty slick. You just, operation one, go to operation two, and that simple, we just made a brake flare. Look at that. Pretty slick tool. All right, I gotta get this big long one in. That's the main line, front to rear. We're gonna try to bleed the brakes for the, I don't know, umpteenth time. All right, go ahead. All juice. I think we might be okay. Truck's back on all four, looking pretty snazzy. Gotta say, I'm gonna jump in really quick, fire this thing up with the key, throw it in drive, hit the brake pedal, 
and we just, you know, let's hope the green bean does the stop thing. First of all, get it fired up today. Oh, immediately. Okay. First time living under its own power in two decades. Moving. It stops. I'm not kidding. Look at it. It's not, I mean, I ain't gonna write home about it. <laughs> yes! Oh, we're only a day and a half late. Well, might as well pull this thing outside. I gotta clean the bed out. Don't forget, we still gotta put a camper in this thing. Figure out how to mount all that stuff up. I gotta clean, I gotta pack. We got 800 some miles to drive. Great. Well, now that it's moved six feet, let's go ahead and throw a camper in it, huh? This is a 1968 L... El Dorado. It's in really good shape. Um, you know, it just, it needs a cleaning mainly and I got the other part of the door now, don't worry about that. Uh, you know, it's got some cabinetry was going in. We got a pretty good looking sink under there. That's it's like a height of sink. And um, there's a speaker. And it's a camper. It fell out of the back of the truck, see? And then I got I got a deal on it. These here jacks are held in with valves. See? That's how you know it's good. And this is uh, for Bluetooth, I think. I don't, I'm not quite sure what, whoops, what that does. But anyway, we're gonna jack these up, get it off the saw horses here, drive the truck straight in, drop it in that truck. Now what a beautiful rig this is. Someone stole all the lights and recycled them except the one. But that's okay. I was told the inside lights work. Saving some money. No more motels, fellers. Here's the year. 19, January 1st, 1968. It could be older. That's just when the... Well, I guess it wouldn't be older than that. It's been restored. You know. And the lights. It took all the lights. Oh, it's got new carpet. I forgot about that. Feller said he put new carpet in. It's got hardwood floors underneath. Okay. No one understands the three jacks thing, but this is what it looks like jacked up. And if you're wondering if it's sturdy, 100%. I should probably stop doing that, actually. Okay, so now I'm going to try to back under this and uh, see what happens. Okay. Admittedly never done this before. Well, we can't forget we've only got five gallons of gas in here of which there's probably one left. We're gonna run out of gas any second. Well, that was easy. Oh, it looks beautiful. Probably was on here at one time. I think it's probably. Yeah, I think you're right.
These are stake pocket hooks over here. So once this goes in, we hook this to this. I think I got my side in. There's a lot of weird noises happening. Yeah. Didn't even squat the old furred. Yep. Well, we are in my home on wheels. Let me give you a tour. You know what I mean? You can check it out if you want, or whatever. So I gotta finish the cabinetry. But I've got the tires up here now. I'm not even sure what that is. Seat. I got the toilet down there and an outdoor stove. And then I got my indoor stove. This is the China Hutch area. Fuse panel. You know we run on them round fuses. See? This is where the you know the tube TV is gonna go. I gotta build a shelf out though, it's not ready yet. I got more custom cabinetry at the foot of the bed here. Nice mattress. Should work pretty good. Plenty of room in here. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of room in this. You just wouldn't think it, but there is. All right, got to throw my suitcases in. I got a bunch of tools I'm going to toss in here. Probably on this side, even the truck out a little bit. Sun's going down. We got to get to the gas station and start making some trails. The tailgate is ripping off as I stand on it. That's fine. Well, this is our strapping system. We just slid the valve through the eyelet and then to the stake pocket that's too small and twisting. Chad's gonna find a big bolt or something to stick through here, try to keep it from sliding off. And the other side is eerily similar. <clears throat> Except it goes way back here. that'll do you know that ain't going nowhere shops all cleaned up just clean the windows up and stuff like that now is a great time to say thank you many thanks to Chad and Alex for the hospitality and let me stay here and ranch and get your shop all dirty and feeding me and storing the vehicles appreciate you very much well let's run down and get some gas Dark is upon us. I just pulled the headlight switch. We got headlights. Forgot to check those. Let's see how many miles we can get down tonight. Filling her up. Hopefully the fuel gauge works. We did put five gallons in, but the needle didn't move. But I don't know if that's enough to make it move at all. We've only got a couple blocks. Not much to report. Does pull to the right on brakes. They're doing okay-ish. Extremely top-heavy. But it's what we got. Oh. Well, that's the inside. I forgot to clean the inside on this side, but I got it on the captain side, not the drinkers. Hopefully nothing falls off. Should be good. No, nope. this is gonna be questionable whether or not this thing holds together. Got a Harbor Freight light, double side taped and screwed on to illuminate my plate, put some caution stickers on her, strap to hold the door shut. I mean, it's all tricked out, basically, is what I'm saying. Well, I looked at the route a couple times. There is a avoid highways, but there's like 58 million stop signs in Iowa for some reason in the middle of nowhere. I'm not a really big fan of that because we don't have much brakes to be quite honest. So I think we're just gonna throw her right on the interstate. Why not? And see how she does. Still don't know if it drinks coolant, Never seen the temp gauge move, maybe it's bad, but we got oil pressure and headlights, that's all we need.
Well, we've gone like 11 miles. Just wanted to check in. I'm gonna to top it off so you can kind of see roughly what kind of fuel mileage we're getting. The whole, let the pads heat on the old calipers. That thing was smoking hot a few minutes ago and grinding pretty bad. And I got some pretty severe brake fade. That one looks brand new now, see? This one, yeah, maybe so. So I'm gonna let it cool down as well. So that brake fade is not so bad because that's all I really got for brakes. But it steers pretty decent, it goes down the road okay. 55 is pretty well top speed because it just starts wagging and rocking. It gets pretty sketchy. Looking pretty good under here. A little bit of a valve cover leak. It's definitely not getting hot. I don't have a temp gauge, but I mean, it would be really obvious if it was getting hot. So, so far so good. Well, she's filled up. Actually not bad, nine miles to the gallon. We can live with that. Now we got a rough idea. So, running board stayed on. <laughs> we'll probably try to go like 40, 50 miles and then we'll check on it again. It's a little sketchy taking off at night, but I, I gotta get miles down. If something happens this late, no parts stores, tow companies are 3X, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it is very late at night. Actually, I think technically it's tomorrow morning, now morning. Anyway, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna try to find one of these parking lots that doesn't have a gate on it or something, or maybe I, maybe I can get a truck stop. Anyway, I'm just gonna crawl in the back, you know what I mean? Take a nap for a few hours until it's 150 degrees in there and I can't stand it. And then uh, in the morning we'll check over the truck. As long as nothing's changed, we're just gonna hit the road. I do need to look at the camper closely because it was making some awful noises, especially when trucks are blowing by. Hopefully we didn't lose any panels or pieces. <laughs> but anyway, we're, we're doing the thing. We're headed west. Are we going to make it to Mount Rushmore? I don't know. Oh, door's locked again. Good morning. We got to get rolling. You got to start paying for parking here in a second. Just got to check the oil, get to the gas station, then we can really do our visual inspection of the old rig. Yeah. Look at that. Hasn't burned a single drop and she ain't milkshake. No wonder no one's in the yard. But I think we're good. I was hoping those two weren't gonna mangle. Yeah, still popped off. All right, let's find a fuel station. Gotta get some coffee, some gasoline. Cold start. Hopefully still got battery. I didn't disconnect it. Look at that. Three pumps of the throttle. No big deal. Let it warm up for a second. Oil pressure's slowly coming up. All right. There was something making an awful racket last night going down the interstate, trying to find loose pieces. It's fairly tightish up here rained a little bit last night too. Not in my head. Okay, this needs fixed somehow eventually. The other corner is just the same. 
And we'll uh, got to fix these mirrors too. I got to try to swing them out. I think if I loosen these, I could swing the brackets out and then readjust the mirror because my mirrors are doing absolutely nothing right now. Boy, we got decent fuel mileage in the last run. I'm going to fill up this jug as well, just in case, if you know what I mean. So on these corners here, I don't have any more screws, but I do have emergency shoelaces. So we'll get this poverty chrome just around this corner, try to get some of this in. I don't know what's making that terrible noise. It sounds like six guys trying to play harmonica at the same time. It's not, it's not good. If it works, you know, is it really a dumb idea? Tried the trade, he said no. So this one is fixed, the mirror. See how it's kicked out like that? And then this side is in. It doesn't look like a lot, but it actually makes a huge difference. I'm gonna get this one figured out as well, and we can hit the road. We might try to go to the Corn Palace today. Yeah, there's a Corn Palace in South Dakota. There, now I can kind of slightly see past the camper, at least see <laughs> traffic that's kind of come and blow by me, you know. All right, let's hit the road. By the way, the coffee here. Tastes like branding cattle smells. I had to go with the Red Bull. It was not, not advised. Not even hungry but it's a taco john's and one cannot simply just pass a taco john's no matter what time of the day you have to stop plus a uh, super potato Olay was whispering in my earlobes and this place is called yeah we're going in might be here a while Filling up here and just happened to look. That fuel filter is absolutely smoked. It's completely full of big chunks. I've never seen them that big get stuck in the filter, but that's doing its job. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go find somewhere to park really quick, swap that out quick. I've only got one with me, so we might have to stop at the parts store and get some more. Use your surroundings, fellers, okay? To your advantage. If you're in a pickle like me and you can't find a Wix 33003, uh, go to a NAPA or a CarQuest and it's a 3003. They just dropped the first number. That's pretty much with every single part. This is still a Wix. So, as you can see, they work phenomenal. Wow. I'm going to try to pinch this off. The best tool ever made, a vice grip. Swap this out quick and only get five gallons of fuel on me for the rest of the day. <laughs> Great. Well, hopefully this is the worst of the tank, right? I mean, there's seeds in there, grass, which is weird because the cap was on. I guess it's just all those years, you know, filling up. But I got new one in it, ready to rock. Uh, we'll just have to put it on the list if we stop again for fuel and I can find a parts store pretty close. We'll just go grab a few more of those, I think. I also want to get the, the quick twist, um, hose clamps so I don't have to use the Leatherman. I could change them out faster instead of spilling gas down my armpit, just turning the knobs on those. Okay, filters changed, full of fuel, throw in another can of Berryman. Did the huge check, tighten down the uh, chains on the side and everything like that. Swept the floor out with my hand a little bit and ran another coat of armor all on the dash. I think we'll slowly bring it around. It's just so dry, it's soaking up, but I don't give this dash enough credit or attention this thing alone is worth what I paid for the truck. It is absolutely perfect. Never seen anything like it. All right, let's get back. Oh, can't forget my SGs. Let's get back on the road. We got a lot of miles. What's that yellow sports car? Oh, that's one of them new Corvette things. I don't know. 
I don't know about them. I, you let me know if you like those things. I, I don't. I'm not gonna say nothing. Huh. Okay. We just turned by Omaha, the big city named after Peyton's Manning play calling, basically. And now we're headed north, up the state line towards Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And a lot of just that, which personally, I like. Truck's doing good still. Hmm. You want to start? There it goes. Barely. Another fuel stop. And we are down to 8.7 miles per gallon. Because now I'm trying to push 60. You know, can we go at least 60? So that's that changes a lot. Our uh, plan of saving money by not doing motels and whatnot and fancy restaurants is not going to work out if we're spending that much more on fuel. So I think I got to slow down a little bit again. I'm going to get me an ice cream sandwich, I think, or something. And let's, let's go fart around, see what we got out here. Running the irrigation out here. Crops are a little, little short. All those people down by the river, Lewis and Clark State Park. I don't know where I'm at currently. That's fine. I'm gonna go run some gravel for a while. It just feels right, you know. Beautiful. in the middle of nowhere. Maybe a guy can win some money back. No. No. Oh. Well, definitely did not make money. Let's tuck our tails and uh, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Big old flat rain and a lot of wind. Neither of which Milo and the El Dorado like. Sounds like a pretty good country and western band, actually. But anyway, we were just barely able to skirt around the eye of the storm. Filling up again, fuel mileage is going down with all the wind we just had. Two more cans of Berryman. It seems to be running pretty good-ish. The accelerator pump is steadily dying though. It's going to need a carb cleaner rebuild soon. Gonna check that filter quick. I think it's just filling full of sediment. Door hasn't fallen off yet, but it's getting really close. Right here. The old Campolator 11,000. This is a lot of miles for it. I think it was made for local camping. You know what I mean? Just as I open the hood, that's about ready to. Oh boy, it got really hot. That's about ready to pop. 
must have been from pushing all that wind because I I was in her pretty hard trying to get around that storm because it hasn't done that so oh I hope that upper rad hose doesn't burst oh or the bottom one oh my goodness I'm gonna close the hood and back away because that's about ready to pop well I guess we'll wait go shopping I don't know what do we need firewood gonna need a bunch of water I know that oh I was hoping to go a couple more hours tonight but <laughs> we might be staying in whatever whatever place this is yeah, nice store at least nope well she's still leaking right there that's the weak point plan is I don't have one but here's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put another hose clamp on the inside I got some jugs of water here I'm gonna cool down the rad cool down the intake we're gonna jump on the highway back here there's an old two-lane highway and 26 miles down the road there's an O'Reilly and once we pull in there I'll see if I have an idea of what we're gonna do another storm heading in. Just pulled up to O'Reilly's here. We're going to see what kind of gear we can pick up. We might just have to patch it up to get up to Sioux Falls. They got a bigger selection up there, I'm just assuming. I wanted to get farther than that. Maybe Mitchell or Chamberlain tonight, but I don't know. Well, I grabbed a little more cool and some shop rags. Most importantly, this. Uh, I'm going to put this gauge in just so I can keep an eye on this a little bit better because I can't hear this thing running. I don't got temp gauge. I don't got a rip them gauge, nothing. And also, it's uh, since it's overheating, I got some tire gel. I thought that that would be important, you know, to shine these up a little bit. However, it does cut into the, the supper budget a little bit. But um, up here on the hose, back here, it doesn't feel as rotten as up here. It's not very pliable either. Actually, I should just, I should just run in and buy a new chunk of hose that I'm here at the store. I was just gonna cut this and move it over, but I'm a little nervous. I'm not even gonna be able to push this back over that once I get it off. So I think I'm gonna run in and grab a piece of uh, heater hose really fast. Well, I spent a few more minutes on the temperature gauge here just to make sure that I couldn't save that before we put this other one in and I got something going on with the cluster on top and both sides because even the fuel when I unplug the sending unit it's not changing anything so we're gonna go ahead and put a aftermarket that gauge in you know I just showed you it so I think I'm just gonna hang it right here I ain't got any provisions in the firewall this firewall is pretty pretty stout so what I'm gonna do is run it through the floor, through the rotted fender, over the brake master, and then lay it on here, and then the units down in there I gotta get to. Went ahead and replaced this hose. It was a couple bucks, but it was so rotten. Oh, by the way, I barely touched it, and the whole end just fell off. So we wouldn't have been able to short it up. Also thought about just capping off that whole system but even if I plug this, I gotta plug that. And then I gotta plug that too, because Ford in its infinite wisdom runs hot water through the intake to heat your air to make more power. You know, and then that loops back around, then in this T and then yada yada. So it would have been a lot of farting around. So anyway, I'm gonna pull off the air cleaner, get some room in there, get that temp sensor probe in, get that ran fast. And sun's starting to go down and we're losing another day yet again. And I am way behind schedule. Temperature probe is in. Just checking for leaks right now. It got pretty tight lengthwise, but it made it. Had to run it through here. Hopefully it don't get bound up in the steering shaft. I think I'll get a zip tie on that just to make sure. I think we're all set. We're definitely gonna have to do another fuel filter in the morning. Well, now we're gonna run 
down the road another 14 miles to the DC and pick up the upper and lower rad hose. I paid for them here, just got to show a receipt, pick them up, and then I got to decide if I'm staying the night or we're pushing on. I think I might push on a little bit more. Well, we made it to the O'Reilly's. If you've never been to a distro, they're just like a regular one, except lots of parts. Anyway, they had the hoses, good news. Not sure if we're just gonna swap these in the morning. Maybe have to do it tonight, but if we blow one, at least we have it. And then the old Ford, I think it deserves an air filter. I never even put one in, now that I think about it. Also, fun fact, micro guard, air filter 42116 if a guy wanted to get a Wix air filter 42116 well wait a minute yep same thing cheaper well here's the plan we're just gonna keep driving I'd like to I mapped out on my digital pocket computer box here there's a super Walmart, which usually has really good potato salad. They got the Amish kind and the deviled egg kind and stuff like that. Probably gonna be my supper. But anyway, you can camp in Walmarts for free. That's about, whatever, 70, 80 miles from here. So I think we're gonna keep heading west and uh, camp there tonight, get some supplies, things like that. Update on work. So good news is the boss said they're, tomorrow is considered a travel day. So there's some other people getting in too. So as long as I'm there tomorrow at a decent time, I think I'm gonna be okay. However, there cannot be any further delays. So I have to be basically in Piedmont, South Dakota tomorrow night, which is across the entire state from South, literally, almost literally, from end to end tomorrow night. If we have a catastrophic failure or something really bad happens, I'm gonna to have to get a rental or haul this somehow or trade it or I don't, I don't got a title, so I don't really know how that's gonna work. But anyway, so that's the plan. Let's just uh, put the boots up, stick this thing in cruise control it doesn't have. it. It's, uh, oh wow, we gotta get moving. It's about 220 degrees right now. <laughs> and uh, see if we can make it to the Corn Palace, I guess. Smells like sugar beet factory and pickled asparagus in here. Well, anyway, it's day, um, yeah, it's day uh, 13 or something. I already checked on my pocket box. 298 miles left to Mount Rushmore. Might swing by, pick up my little brother, Sean. Cause we're gonna have to bleed these brakes if you if you've never been to the black hills they're hills yeah yeah there's a lot of them and it's like this and this and this whoa about rolled the truck um so we're gonna need the rear brakes right now i got a right front basically also forgot to get a fuel filter last night i realized when i was at o'reilly because that's pretty well plugged but anyway Let's get to the gas station and get this party started. Last big push, Iowa to Mount Rushmore in a 72 F-250 off the road for 19, 20 years. That's, that's fine. Chad, not the other Chad, sent me along with his bungee cord. That's how a guy keeps the door closed, you know what I mean? It barely leaks, you know? Quick daily oil check. Oh goodness. All right, we gotta put uh, about two quarts in today. <laughs> Boy, she really started eating on that. Come on, Wilo. Last day. There. Good old Wilo. 
Well, for only the second time in like 18 years or something, 19, no, it's like 20 years now. How old am I? 23 years. A lot of years. I've missed the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. But it used to be a weekend, and then it was like four days, then it was five, and we were like, that ain't gonna, how's that gonna work? And sure enough, it's still filled up. The, the rally's been over for a while now, a week, I think. And there's still bikes pouring through here. So I didn't even think about that. I bet motel rooms right now are, they're usually like three, four, five hundred dollars for motels a night, but you gotta book them like a year in advance. We're not gonna get close to Sturgis, but the hills might still have quite a few bikes in them. So all the more reason to get maybe two or three brakes instead of just the one. Anywho, at a gas station, there's a there's a Taco Bell here. Going to have to get a breakfast gut bomb, you know, Diablo sauce, because we're going to have heartburn the rest of the way there. You know, you can't just go easy. All right, here we go. Boy, we definitely did some mosquito control last night. Even had to scrub the windshield down. Well, just walked out from the store and got another coolant lake. And I believe it's this unit itself on offer closer thing. But when I get the rest of this stuff taken care of first, I have decided to tear into this. We might as well. Let's put new rings in this. Installing new rings and bearings. Got this cheap little hose splicey offer. Some old school turn clamps. And then I had to get this little plier because my Leatherman is having a hard time getting these old school clamps off. Okay, got that patched up quick. Really tough to get this all the way on. It's same issue we were having with the other hose. They're so dry rotted and hard. Hopefully that doesn't pop off. Should be okay. Nope. Pull over in 20 miles to fix that again. Okay, now we'll pull this up on the curb here. Guy can lay on the grass, change out that filter, pop a new one in. Another nasty filter. This one is, well, never mind. I was about to say it's slightly better than the other one, but this is more fine sediment. I guess that's the good news is it's slowly getting better, but I got one more, which is the 33033. The 33003 is clear, the 03 is steel. That's why I get the 003, so I can see what's going on, and I'm like this. Well, let's jump on the road. We got 300 miles. It's still pretty cool out. It's nice and early. Hits! Yeah. here and way up there you can see the top of the corn palace and there you have it the world famous corn palace under the big top all right let's hit the highway
another big storm. Well, we made it. That extra 300 miles, we're now 790 miles in or 800 miles in. It's up there. Rewarded old Wilo, the grasshopper smasher, with the wash. Had to clean off the bumper and the grill and the chrome and windshield and sprayed off the inside a little bit. And I've been working really hard on that dash. Just armor all, armor all, armor all. Every time I stop because if I get in a pickle and I need to, pickle, good. I just sell the dash and we're good, you know what I mean? All right, I'm gonna go pick my brother up. We're gonna bleed the brakes, change the fuel filter again. I don't think you guys need to see that again, right? We've done it. How many times have we done that now? It's a lot. Pump, 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 hold, crack, you know. But we're still going to attempt to get to Mount Rushmore. The storm should be blowing through pretty quick. This is a beautiful drive. Sit back, relax. Well, as the rain starts to fall, we made it over 800 miles in a 1972 F-250 that sat for two decades. Against all odds, breakdowns, repairs, storms, you name it, we're here. Historic Mount Rushmore Monument. I've been here many, many times, but it honestly does not get old. Every time I hear it, it's just absolutely breathtaking. If you've never been, you've got to put it on your list. And they've built this huge, amazing memorial when I was a grasshopper, you used to have to hike down a trail and it actually got worse as you got closer because you went down this hill right here. But that's gonna do it. I had a tremendous amount of fun. We saw a lot of stuff on the way. It was just an awesome revival. The truck is a gem. Not quite sure what to do with it yet. Might just have to sell it as a whole rig. Maybe we keep it. Maybe we just get rid of the camper, fix the truck. Not quite sure, but as always, thanks for watching. Appreciate you very much. We'll see you soon.